Right. Well, welcome to the Patchwork Arts Council Stir Crazy Sessions. Tonight we're here with the artist Jane Dion. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of you have seen Jane, Jane working on the mural in town, um, or maybe you caught her solo exhibition at Toast last year. And we've also um, shown a number of her pieces at the Patchwork Arts Council uh, Mocha Long Island. So we're excited to have her here tonight to talk about her work and all the amazing things that inspire her. Thank you. It's so good to be here. <laughs> it worked. We got it together. We did, yes. <laughs> so we'll just start uh, just a little bit more about yourself, Jane. So like, maybe you can just start by telling everybody a little bit about your background, the other type of work you do, and then we'll talk about your fine art work and look at some of your cool work. Okay. So I started doing murals when I was a child. My mom let me paint on my walls, do whatever I wanted, because she was an artist. And um, she always um, introduced all of us to some kind of um, strange things in <laughs> movies and like Harold and Maude and Cabaret. And um, I grew up um, having picnics in cemeteries on vacations ah! and just like crazy things like yeah. that. So um, I started drawing from her art books mm -hmm. and um, just had a regular job and started doing murals more often as an adult and that led into full-time murals and then that, that led me into set design and Ooh. it's just <laughs> it's a long story but yeah, basically no. um and then after doing set design for so long um I started uh, doing some of my own personal artwork mm -hmm. and that just started exploding my mind just started going crazy thinking of new ideas and getting them all down and yeah painting and sculpture and just all types of mediums. What were some of the books you remember drawing from from your mom? Because she obviously cultivated your love of so, wonderful, creepy things. She, yeah, <laughs> she did. So she had um, famous artists okay. books, which is course a corresponding okay. class. So um, she had different lessons that she'd do, and then she'd mail them in, and so oh, one magically cool. on the yeah, other okay. end would, would grade it and critique it and send it back. And it was started by illustrators, um, Albert Dorn and Norman yeah. Rockwell. So yeah. I learned from most of their wow, illustrations. Okay. And so um, it was really step-by-step -step shading yeah. and, and basic shapes. And, yeah, you know, formal. Kind of formal. Yeah, it was very formal. So. Do you feel like all of, do you feel that any of those types of aesthetics still influence you? Oh, definitely. Definitely. Yeah, I, I, I love those old illustrations, the details. Yeah. They, they were amazing artists. Yeah, that makes sense seeing your work mm -hmm. um do you want to look at some of your older yeah, work sure. and then we can talk about it as we go to so let's go to and we're gonna go to your images And you can just um, guide me through where you want me to start. Okay, well, actually, if you want to go to that very first one, that's, okay. that's one of my earlier drawings um, inspired by vintage photography, um, and they changed it up a little. I mean, it's it's pretty close to the old vintage picture, um, just getting kind of a feel for the genre that I wanted to be in. And um, so this was inspired by um, a breakup that I had that left me mm. feeling heartbroken and lonely and vulnerable, which really inspired many, many, many more pieces. So in this one, you can see she's got a corset and her heart's in there because she's being exposed, but she's leaving the relationship with her suitcases off to better adventures. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, that's kind of how it started. Um, she's ready to take it on. Right. Just kind of playing with that aesthetic. There we go. A little it's a little close, close up. up. Mm -hmm. And you you incorporate a lot of these types of elements, like the cages and even this period of dress. So mm -hmm. you want to talk a little bit about that and what that's called? Some people aren't familiar with the term steampunk. So okay. if you want to so, define well, it for yourself. So steampunk to me, um, for a better term, I, I think when you're explaining it is Victorian futurism. Mm -hmm. So it's a Victorian aesthetics where the Victorians did everything so glamorously and so detailed and refined. And you put that together with 
all of the um, the factories that were, were forging ahead with technologies and taking it even a step further and you're looking at the time machine and all those wonderful you know HG Wells and all uh, all those great novels um, and, and so it's kind of that culmination of fancy Victorian but futuristic yeah. thinking and um, so I do that a lot with my pieces in that um, you get the silhouette of something vintage mm -hmm. um, brought in with the prosthetics, which has, you know, it has a steampunk vibe to it, but really the prosthetics are more of a feeling of being broken, mm -hmm. that we're all broken in some way, mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, we all have that commonality. And this is just kind of more, um, that you can see it, it kind of draws you to it being broken and then you can take on the, the feel of piece and make it yeah. your, you know, your own interpretation. Yeah, I feel like whenever you look at your figures um, and with these elements of the, um, the steampunk, there's always some, something someone can relate to. It's either the feeling or they're attracted to the aesthetic and then they get pulled in further. Mm -hmm. um, these are just some other images from Jane. Stop me when you want to talk about something specific, but I'll, I can click through some of them. Wait, let's just click through some and then if you sure. see something you want to ask me about. What about know? your um, figures that aren't from um, photo references? Are they from people in your life? <laughs> so, <laughs> yes. so these were the earlier ones that were showing here. Um, my That is actually a real life person. Um, uh, that that is um, my really good friend who's a helicopter pilot. He's he's pretty broken. He's, oh. he's not that he's crashed, but he's he's um, like a very go getter kind of guy, and he's mm. broken almost every bone in his body. So I had to do a portrait of him broken <laughs> because it really is <laughs> he really is. Busted. Was that one of the <laughs> one of the big breaks? Was his arm? I'm guessing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he's yeah, he's got a lot of uh, broken bits. <laughs> um, but I do a lot of, uh, I'll think of an idea um, and a pose that I want, and so my daughter poses for me a lot, so I take a lot of pictures of her, and she's a good sport, and she <laughs> lets me do whatever I want, whatever kind of crazy things I'm trying to find her. I want to come up with. <laughs> that, Go the other way. The other way, sorry, yeah, okay. That's okay, we'll keep going. These are just earlier pieces. Um, there you go. Those okay. are my daughter's hands. <laughs> Those are her hands. Um, so I'll just set up something in my studio with the lighting and get the shadows that I want and just, you know, keep directing her how to pose her hands, her arms. Um, sometimes I'll have her sitting on a little couch and, and in there and, you know, I'll set her up with some yeah. kind of flowy fabric and um, take pictures of her. So. Yeah. She's, she's really a good sport. With all that. <laughs> I love that you're staging, you're staging these pieces just like, you know, it, like the works that you stage for your work life. Right. Like, right? It, yes. Yes. So your stage design really comes in handy. Yeah. And what types of things do you design? Um, I do mostly, I do um, holiday themes. So Christmas, Easter, um, I um, take care of or I keep refurbishing an antique carousel that was made in England um, but I paint it two or three times a year. Um, I've designed uh, different elements to um, the Santa displays. Santa, I do window set, whatever. <laughs> I can do it. I you do can it all. do it I all, love doing it Large and small. Uh, it's just... It's you really heard fun. it if you need her. <laughs> <laughs> window designs on Main Street. Like, I want to do yeah, that. Right, well, <laughs> oh my gosh, I drive by dreaming of some of those. Some of those places and what I could do with them. Oh my get my hands I would there. love to see it. Uh, <laughs> you're bi coastal, so a lot of these things you're talking about are taking place in California, in Orange mm -hmm. County. Um, I do most of my work there. Mm -hmm. And then I come here six to eight months out of the year and create new crazy this things. Work. <laughs> this kind of stuff. So that's the same thing only in a, in a painting. Yeah, and then a lot of your pieces have these really beautiful, ornate frames. Um, and elements that look like they were picked up, you know, you can, you, maybe you found them hunting. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about the work that you kind of put into those too? Because it's not just sure. the piece itself, but yep. you're often building around. There's some in here if we keep scrolling. Sure. Oh wait, I, we got to stop right here okay. for a second. Okay. I talk about my daughter a lot. This is oh. my son. Oh, I never this, saw. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is my son. He's, he's older. He's 28. Um, and I did this 
portrait of him and it was published in a literary magazine, oh, how awesome. which is the next frame over. There it is. So there he is. Oh, cool. And um, he's just as involved in my art as my daughter is. I mean, sh she poses for me, but um, yeah. he is my critiquer. He holds no punches. I mean, he'll walk right into my studio and say, Mom, really? Seriously, you can do better than that. Oh, so he's, he's great. All he's right. He's really good. I, and I love a good critique. I love pick me apart. I love it because it's the only way you get better. So um, so he's very key. Uh, he's a key element. Um, oh, there's my mushroom tree. Your mushroom tree. <laughs> yeah, that's some chuckle. Oh, cool. Yeah, so let's see. If we keep going, there's some frames there somewhere. Okay. My dog walkers. <laughs> oh, this is an oh. interesting piece. This actually is from um, a, a lady that I found on Instagram. And she is, um, she did lose her leg. Um, she had a different prosthetic on in the picture. And I contacted her because I was so moved by this picture of her. She's out in the wilderness. She lives in Brazil. Mm -hmm. And I said, please, I'd love to do your portrait. And she gave me permission um, to do it in my, yeah. in my um, aesthetic. and. The day I finished it and sent it to her digitally was happened to be her birthday. Oh, and she was so that's excited awesome. about it. So this is a special little Oh, it's so there. cool. Yeah. When you're dealing with the prosthetic pieces that you're adding, how are you deciding what body parts you're you're replacing? Is it just an aesthetic? It's just a feeling. Yeah. I you know, I'll decide you know, my daughter will <laughs> pose for me and I'm like, gosh, this looks really good. I think I'm gonna break your leg in this. <laughs> You know, or your arm, your elbow, your hand, maybe like five pieces. I don't know. It's just, it, it's just a feeling. So there she oh, is. There she is. She's a good sport. There she's posing for me there. Yeah. And then the next picture. There, that's, oh, that's, that's awesome. Right okay, great. Yeah. So in this one, everyone thinks he, he's dropping the heart down. Um, to her but she's actually giving it you can see the little cage door open uh, she's actually giving it away oh yeah and he's gonna take off with it so oh. there might be one more next year oh there it is okay yeah now you can really see it right there these are beautiful are you always working um we saw a couple pieces in charcoal saw a couple in pencil oh, well a lot of in pencil um are you working in other mediums too Mostly <clears throat> pencil. I love graphite pencil and I don't even get into all the fancy pencils. I just go with a mechanical pencil because mm -hmm. I have the same tip every time. It's it's nice and even. I, and I do a little bit of uh, graphite powder with brushes sometimes to get that smooth shading. And then that's really how I yeah. um, do it. That's my daughter mm -hmm. again. Beautiful fabric. Yeah. It's a good one. But that one's a big piece, so there. Oh, I that, that is. Really you can big. see um, how big it is. Yeah, that's really good for scale. Mm -hmm. Getting those details. Mm -hmm. And then that's um, a print that I had done, and then I add re, re inked it. Oh, and there is. It. So it's I can do it. You know, you can have the print, the original, or in pencil, the print, or the print with ink. So. Yeah, there's some options. <laughs> That's nice. Jane has lots of prints available for work. So if you're interested, you can reach out for information. What's the best way for them to contact you? Like, um, what do you prefer? Through, well, I mean, I have a lot of people do it through Instagram. Mm -hmm. That's easy and quick, direct, um, or email. There's email on my um, on my website. There's an email to contact me. So Okay. And we'll post it, too, on Facebook underneath the video. All right, let's keep going because there's some friends. Okay, there's my son. And okay. <laughs> son and so there's his hand. So there's oh, his there hand is. In the Strange Cafe. <laughs> <laughs> so he does model for me. <laughs> strange Cafe, didn't that sell in your last show? Today? It was the first one that sold. I mean, what, within the first 20 minutes of the show? We yes. sold that original piece, and that was really exciting. Um, and you can't see it here, but you did uh, a very elaborate um, frame for the piece. I did, and it might be in the next. Oh, okay. Frame. Oh, there, there it is. Go. Sorry. There <laughs> yeah. So this is actually we we're talking about my frames being different. This is actually the back of an old chair. Oh, that that's what it I is. Painted and then created that little stage for the strange cafe. Yeah, I've seen a lot of these close, and those frames they always they usually look perfect. Do you ever find them in pieces? Do you have to fix them? What do you have to kind of go through? Yeah, absolutely. I find them in 
pieces. So, <laughs> so all of the, the I don't know what the, what you call it. It's like the filigree or the the molding yeah, part of it is separate. You know, they're not always wood carved. Some of them are clay and they fall off. Mm. Um, some of them are, are wood and they've been knocked off and broken. So I do restore yeah. the frames. And um, what kind of materials do you use to do that? It's a secret. <laughs> Oh, well, it's all kinds okay, of never things. mind. All, you know, it just depends on what's going to work right with that no. piece, how much detail's in it. Yeah. Because um, some of them I do try to whittle out of a little piece of wood. Um, a lot of them are clay, so then they have to be baked. Or um, there's an epoxy clay, too mm -hmm. hard epoxy that dries nice and hard, and then you got to. You have to give away all your secrets. To, you, gotta, you, know, you gotta glue it and you gotta fill it and you gotta sand it and you gotta put There's a lot of work that goes into it. Yeah, but your knowledge mode. of all these materials is so vast. Yeah. Well, you know what? When you want something bad enough, yeah. you figure out how to, figure out how to make it. <laughs> now here's some sculpture. Yes. Jane so, also does sculpture. This is actually a little music box. You wind up the bottom and it spins around and it plays here from Santa Claus. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> I love that element. So many of your pieces have these little like gadgets or working pieces. What makes you add those types of things? I love um, automatons. I went to see the show at the Met last summer. Mm -hmm. Amazing. And I, I want to learn how to do it. I, I have a lot of old clocks, clock parts, clock books. I just have it. You think with COVID, all, I would have been able to figure it out by well, now, but I haven't know. had time. <laughs> you were working on artwork, though. <laughs> I would. But I really I want to build yeah. some kind of automaton so that they actually. Yeah, like, it just looks like you're moving that way. <laughs> yeah, trial and error. So, But I'll, I'll get there. Ooh, here's another one. So, is that a real bee? This is a real bee. Um, <laughs> You find them behind the TV of all places because <laughs> it's up against a window and they come in mm -hmm. and they die and I collect their precious little bodies. You give them new life. I do. And um, this is a real dandelion that oh, really? I very carefully preserved. Wow. And, um, it's still together. It's, it's holding on pretty well. It was kind of an experiment to see mm -hmm. if I could get the dandelion to stay together. And so far, so good. So I'd right. uh, like to do more of those. There's, There's another, another little bee. One. So these are called um, my mournful keepsakes mm -hmm. because they all have a little critter that's passed on and <laughs> we get to still celebrate them. Ladybugs. Ladybugs. And then those I did for um, um, Amulet Artistry when they, oh, had, they oh, were having a show yes. and, and I had wanted to do something with body piercing for a long yeah. time. So I put those three pieces Oh, together. cool. Yeah. Very nice. I hadn't seen them. And there's another one for keepsake. And that's your daughter, right? Or Parts of her. Parts? Yes. Parts of her. There she is. Here she there is. You can see her mermaid. Her little face there. <laughs> My little pouty, sad mermaid. <laughs> and then that's the same amazing. thing. I, I did it a little differently. Mm. I put her on rocks. Um, you can see the ship in the back a little more prominently there. Mm. That's, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think that's self <laughs> Sorry. I think so. We all know somebody Sorry, like whoever that. you are. <laughs> we all know somebody like that, don't we? Whoever you are made her do it. <laughs> okay, so this is funny because this is, um, I did my self-portrait off this because it's the only kind of self-portrait I ever did. So the, that's me. And then if the, you go to the next one, Yay! that's what it turned out to be. I know the happy owner of oh, this good. piece. I'm she so loves good. it. Yeah. That, that's a good self-portrait. <laughs> <laughs> the best part of me. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> More um, legs. Is, so this is my friend uh, Missy, Missy Costanza, mm -hmm. and those are her legs. And um, so one night we, I had had this in my mind, and I was like, um, hey, if we got 20 minutes, can you put these socks on and this little <laughs> skirt and stand up against that wall for me? <laughs> so she did. No problem. I, I made her dance around all over, and uh, <laughs> this was a good one, so uh, I love it. Any friend has to know and be ready. 
yeah. that they might. Yes. You might need them. <laughs> so then I, I turned her in also into a shadow box. I love that. Yeah. Little mini stages. Oh, little insane. I, I love I doing love the them. 3D. Yeah. It's fun. I'd love to do more and um, have them be interactive so that you can pull a lever or ah, a of string course. or something the little, that they will move. Yeah. Oh, I'd love to see those. I'm working towards that. Have you ever thought about, because um, you're working large scale, right, for your work life, mm -hmm. and then in your own artwork, you are creating these mini stages, but have you ever thought about, like, connecting the two, so a large scale installation? Yes, I have. I, I Well, you know, COVID hit and that kind of yeah. thing, but yes, yeah. I do. Because even your booth, like at Arts on Terry, mm -hmm. you know, you always treat them like an environment, mm -hmm. so... It's kind of welcome to my world. Um, <laughs> when you come to my house in California, it is what you expect to find. It's, you know, everyone comes into my, my office and my studio area and it's, you know, the ceiling's all painted and it's all extravagant and there's gadgets and <laughs> there's all kinds of body parts under glass domes. It's like a little, um, it's like a little um, a museum. In, yeah, museum. A curiosity. Maybe. It's a curiosity shop. Yeah. <laughs> and and my daughter was standing there one day and she goes, I just realized that this is like what's inside your brain standing here. Like <laughs> yeah. these are all elements of your personality video. and what you know what you're thinking about. And I said, Yeah, that's we need pictures of your studio, <laughs> Jane. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> that's my monster in love. <laughs> this was at Muñeca Art it House. Was, yes. Last uh, October or around that time. Mm -hmm. This one you can kind of see all the hairs on the back ah! of the monster's hand. What are you making the little hairs out of? A brush. Okay. Real hair. Mm -hmm. That's my hand. So this is another, <laughs> you know, what I do think of a pose that I want. And if my daughter's not available, then I'll, I'll do my hand. And, and then that little ball of yarn um, will become a heart. So if you. Go, there, you there go. it is. There you go. Oh, cool. Thank you for setting these up yeah, this way. So this is always good to see. The process, you know, um, mm -hmm. I don't have a live human heart, unfortunately, in any of my domes. <laughs> oh, <laughs> in California, you so sure? I don't. <laughs> um, so I, the yarn. <laughs> the yarn has the to yarn do it. <laughs> We get you like a rubber one. I know. <laughs> we I get you a rubber that. heart one. So this frame I had to restore, and this yeah. frame I found in an attic in uh, New Jersey on a pick mm -hmm. last year sometime, and um, it was a, it was a mess. It was falling apart, and so I was able to repair it, and it's beautiful. Yeah, you'd never know it. Mm -hmm. You had told me when I first saw it, and I couldn't imagine all the pieces it was in. Mm -hmm. You did such a beautiful job restoring all those things. Okay. So that's my ear horn. And ear horn. In the next slide, you'll see it. There all it is. Up. So that's another good find. Does that work, Jane? It does work. So How does you, it work? You well, you you say whatever you need to say through the little <laughs> spout, and it comes out the big uh, Victrola, the old Victrola, the old Victrola, the old Victrola. <laughs> Sorry, timer. Guys. And this you can see is in um, toast. In yes. The, in the banquet room that. That, uh, this the, is part the of their permanent collection. It is. Also, Jane even did some of the um, some of the new interesting um, window drapes and things that you see in there. She's kind of set the scene in toast. Also, yeah, that was that was fun. There's so <laughs> many more things I wanted. To <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, the bunny another, is one of my favorites. Yeah, so this is actually a metal frame, and it was also broken at the bottom, and I restored that part and painted it to look like the metal. And then I took a little glass um, finial from an old lamp and put it at the very top. So you can see that little bit. And then I oh, we can do it. There we go. There it is. Full moon. Mm -hmm. So repetition of shapes in this one with the dome glass and, and all of the, the bubbles. I was trying to click on the bunny because so you could see his little eyepiece. His little monocle. His monocle. Oh, another one. Yes. Yeah, so this one um, is my um, octopus sconce, and this is made out of there's a um, 
armature of metal underneath mm -hmm. and then I use um, foil and then I tape it with um, any kind of tape really that you whatever you have handy <laughs> that you need to get rid of. <laughs> and then this is um, a good example of the epoxy clay so it doesn't need to be fired mm. um, it dries within 24 hours you, it's ready to paint it's a little sticky it's a little hard getting used to working with it um once it starts to set up you, you know you're gonna have to work pretty quickly you, you mm. can use a little bit of water with it but um that's Wisconsin also a, in the permanent collection also, of toes yes you can go there to see a lot of these pieces <laughs> actually, yes, actually yes, coming up <laughs> yeah, so this is obviously um parts of a cuckoo clock and the bellows work on that one. You can pull the little arm the down. The little bellows. And the cuckoos. Cuckoos. And here's another Oh, there piece. it is. These are a, a triptych, right? Yes. So these three are meant to see, be seen together. Diptych. There's two. Oh, diptych, there's sorry. Two. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> diptych. Yeah, there's two of them. Um, so this one is a very, very tiny little drawing that you can really only see very well if you look through the magnifying glass. I want to make more of these as well. Yeah, um, they're like little treasures. And I would like to make it on a, on a whip, giving you my ideas in my head, but <laughs> I'd like to do it um, on a wheel so that you can spin the wheel and look at the oh, different images. Oh, how cool. Oh my gosh. Let's see. <laughs> All right. Get busy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, oh, here's another piece that you can find. So now post. I'm doing more lighting. <laughs> Hot air balloon. <laughs> Staying in with our uh, Victorian theme. <laughs> and the airship. One. airship. These again, you can find these at Toast. <laughs> Uh oh, the Joker's back. That's my fairy queen and the fool. It's another sort of self explanatory. Yes. I really like her by herself, too. So I'm, I do, I too. I really do her. Yeah, you could. She, kind she of has, is her own. She is her own piece for sure. Yeah. And that's the frame, which I also had to um, repair. Okay. Now, do you also and continue working about these pieces too? But um, do you do any of the steampunk festivals? Do you dress Victorian? Does any of this lead into sort of your physical life? Do I you... haven't done any um, <laughs> steampunk festivals where I've actually sold anything. I haven't. Okay. I haven't done a booth at any of them, but I have attended them. I do get dressed <laughs> up. I love a good costume. <laughs> Any excuse to wear I something know. fabulous, I am on board. It's a silly question. <laughs> Jane was a great model for us for Paint the Great South Bay last year. Yeah. <laughs> the ladies had fun. Oh, we, we ran out of, out of the park just before. I know, it was really good timing. <laughs> that was fun. Here's another favorite. Look at that beautiful hair. Can I get close to it? There we go. A little closer. These are beautiful. Nocturnal Embrace is the name of that one. And I like oh, using uh, the metal um, in the same silhouette as the body so oh. that you don't sometimes notice it at first that yeah. it's not clothing. Yeah, it's very, you add it in such an elegant way that it doesn't look jarring or like, um, it doesn't, it doesn't put you off when you, it really does blend right into their little, like, this is another good example of it where it's just like right in her calf line and mm -hmm. so it just looks like an extension of them mm -hmm. it doesn't look it doesn't you know mm -hmm. doesn't look jarring mm -hmm. i love this octopus it's one of my favorites okay, thank you. you have a lot of uh you have the mermaid with octopus you have a lot of sort of like marine life that creeps into these yeah so that's part of the steampunk aesthetic too always with the octopus and twenty thousand leagues under the sea mm -hmm. that's where the nautical theme comes in uh, sticking to traditional um, steampunk style this is something i've moved forward with um that doesn't have any figures in it it's mm -hmm. all about the trees um i have so many more trees coming uh, this one was the garden of good and evil and um, inside the trees there's the little hearts um the red heart representing you know healthy life mm -hmm. um 
the other heart representing dying and decaying but you know that is also a beautiful thing if you live mm -hmm. long enough where you're really decaying then you've yeah. had a good long life yeah. so it's it's a positive thing <laughs> <laughs> and this is and the inside is all cut paper that's layered together how many layers are in a piece like this i think this is mm, good question i think let's skip over to the next okay part. sure i don't remember if there were eight oh or great ten. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it just goes on and I don't on. Remember how many. And these trees, so this is sort of a new direction. We also see these in the mural. Mm -hmm. um, do you want to talk more about the trees? Yes, yeah, so I had um, purchased, actually, no, I didn't even purchase this old clock. A really good oh. friend of mine, um, Annabelle, who has an antique shop in San Mauritius, wonderful, wonderful, Ooh. wonderful friend. <laughs> and she gave me this old clock, and because she knows I want to learn about. Um, automaton making and it really has to do with clock building yeah. and she's been really great at finding old books and saying here you need to read this Feeding one because she knows <laughs> everything about clocks oh, cool. so she gave me this old clock that wasn't working and um i i uh didn't know what to do with it i knew i wanted to use it as a frame because i, I like to use different things for my frames or build mm -hmm. frames and um I just was staring at it one night and I'm like, oh, this needs to have a tree growing out of it with roots and what would be in this little round part of it. And um, I thought of a well and um, it just, it, I think there, there might be one. Continue They're forward. not in order. We can always go back. Yeah, we can definitely stuff. go back as you're talking about these, some different parts and pieces. There you go. Oh, there it is. That was the first one. Also a toast private collection. <laughs> <laughs> so this one is cut. This one I think is eight layers of cut paper to make the little well in there. And um, so this one's called the Tree of Knowledge, and I really loved it. It was sort of yeah, an experiment um, of what I could do with it, the materials, but like putting all the materials together, um, drawing and sculpture and, and all that with the wire. And I just it really has resonated with me about trees. I love trees. Most people love trees. Um, <laughs> when I would sketch as a child, we had a giant tree in our backyard and I would always be in the tree sketching. Um, my kids grew up going to the redwoods. I was in the redwoods all the time Ooh. in California. And so trees are really special yeah. to us. Um, and it represents so many things, trees. Um, you know, there's so many wonderful books with trees and references of trees um, mm -hmm. that everybody just, has a tree story. I feel like, you know, the tree <laughs> is a universal thing. It means so many yeah. things. It's, it's in touch with nature. It's in touch with God. It's in touch with so many things. So um, I'm going to do a lot more fun things with trees. And so I did put them in the mural uh, because they are representative of all the previous things I stated. And, and I just, I love making them. Yeah, they look really fun. I you want can to tell you how fun making them. Yeah, <laughs> I want to get more intricate with them. I want them coming out of... And I love these elements that you add. This one a lot. Of course, you'll see the mural, some images if you haven't seen the mural already. Um, but this feels very much like it's been incorporated yes, in the mural. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> and I think I did this one... Yeah, I did this one before I did the design of the mural. So okay. um, when, I, when I decided to do lenses... I was like, I at least have to yeah. do one tree, but you know, it turned out being a, a few more. <clears throat> what this, about this one, one? <clears throat> this one you can crank ah! and the tree spins all the way around 360. I love that it's in the mirrors. Yeah, like looking at itself. it's really great. <laughs> well, like, I mean, it reflects so many parts of yeah. the room and the light and the wire is copper wire. So you can see that it's tarnishing and, mm. and it can be rubbed off and made new again and you can let it get old again. So it's kind of like the seasons of the tree. Um, this one was um, really fun because I got to do the mechanical part yeah. of it, you know. You're starting to get more and it. more mechanical. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, beautiful. And that's it. In that's the crank. Oh, and here's the inside. Yeah. So you're illustrating and then uh, paper cutting, right? Yes. yes. Oh, those little mushrooms. And that's another one I did with three trees. Mm -hmm. Trace Generations, this one's called. Oh, and these. And so now, <laughs> now we're getting into something you've new. You've been busy during um, 
getting stir crazy yes. or not rather yes. <laughs> during COVID. And so these new works, uh, did these start during this time or were these a thought before and then you had time to do them? How did you come to them? So this is a picture of my daughter holding these beautiful roses that we have for one of the sets um, at Easter time. And she was helping me um, take the set down and I said, scoop up all those big, beautiful roses. Like, I need to take a picture of you. <laughs> so she did. And um, I've had it for years, literally years. One day I'm going to draw you. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do with it. And then with COVID and isolation and, yeah. and you know, everyone sitting at home, you know, wondering what we should be doing. And I thought, well, I'm going to do something with this. And I immediately thought, you know, we're all wearing masks. So I'm going to do this with her wearing a mask. I'm going to put the little elements of COVID in there somewhere. And then I thought, you know, I have all these pastels. Mm -hmm. I never use pastels. I never use color. Oh. Very rarely do I use color. And I thought, well, this is a good time to experiment, get a feel for the pastel. Maybe, you know, I kind of felt like getting my fingers dirty. And, and mm -hmm. um, so I did it on a piece of paper and it came out pretty good. I was pretty happy with the result there yeah, is. They're yeah. beautiful. So then I thought, you know, I never do people other than the people in my house, my kids, mm -hmm. right? And so I thought, well, I'm going to do something um, a little more out of my box mm -hmm. and use this material that I'm not familiar with because I'm stuck at home and it's a good time to get, you know, proficient mm -hmm. at something else. And I'm going to do other ethnicities mm -hmm. because. COVID has affected everyone worldwide. And yeah. so I started doing these portraits representing people from around the world and how we're all wearing masks yeah. and trying to deal with this horrible pandemic. And so here's um, a Japanese geisha girl with her mask on. That'd and all the masks cool. are slightly different. They're pretty much the same silhouette, but I've tried to change them a little bit so mm. they're not identical. <laughs> They all have the color quality, two of these. They all feel like um like a colored photograph. Okay. So they yeah, have like that's nice. yeah, I think so. The way that you handle the pastels, they so, add this little element of something. These are around. done on boards now. Thank you, um, Sure. And you can see in the next couple that I got a little more proficient. Oh yeah, look at you go. <laughs> Holy moly. <laughs> Wow, this is beautiful. Her, her skin was so oh, beautiful. Her skin is so beautiful. I was really, really happy. Oh, with I love this. it. And she's got the COVID earrings. Oh, in it. wait, I didn't see that. Let's see if we can uh, actually let's zoom in a little. Oh, there they are. There they are. Oh my God, I love it. Look how beautiful her eyes, her lashes. Her skin looks amazing. And then this one. There we go. This is just the sketch. Wait, yeah, that's how it all starts. Mm -hmm. You know, very Under messy. Baby. And there we go. She's coming together. There. Yay! <laughs> oh my gosh. I love yeah. that. <laughs> Yeah, it's so serious oh like there's these little like if there's it's a quirky little <laughs> element there's a little fun in there you know yes. it's not all <laughs> doom and gloom there's a little uh -huh. so this series James. is called the toxic garden and mm -hmm. um because uh we don't know what's lurking out there it's you know yeah. a beautiful world and there's dangerous things that we can't see and it and it's affecting all of us so yeah now, before we go to that picture, because I don't know what it is yet, <laughs> um, do you have any other plans for the series, other uh, cultures that you want to represent? Yes, is it uh, like ongoing? It's ongoing. Okay. I, okay. I just completed this morning a uh, Native American. Oh, awesome. Um, so there'll be um, an Indian girl from India okay. with her beautiful regalia. And um, I'm just going to. And all women. Yes. All women. Yeah. I love Maybe it. I might do the last one different as a surprise, <laughs> but okay. um, all women. I mean, I, I just love drawing the female yeah. more, more than um, the masculine, not for any particular reason. Mm -hmm. I, I just, you know, um, you can do more, I think, with, yeah. it, you know. Mm -hmm. All right. We snuck it in there. What is this? This is a mermaid. <laughs> this is bronze casting um, oh. that I did years ago, but I, I just oh, kind of wanted beautiful. to show you that I am. Um, 
that I know how to do that. Yeah. It's a lot of fun, but you know, foundries are kind of hard to come by, and yeah. now usually they want to do all of the the casting, and then it's it's very expensive. So. Yeah. Were you able to yeah. take this, pro do the entire process yourself, yes. or oh, okay, the whole great. Thing. Oh, yeah. how cool. Yeah. Yeah. So it was wax. Yeah. Well, it was clay first, then I made a mold, mm -hmm. poured the wax in, and then um, poured the bronze into the lost wax cast, and you know that whole process. Is yeah, take it's a, a really cool process. There is uh, Stony Brook University does it with their students. Yeah. And that's oh, also a bronze. Oh, that's also a, a bowl that I made. These are beautiful. I never saw these. Thank you. Yeah, I thought I'd kind of oh, show you some extra special. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so beautiful. Oh, it's a thick piece. It is very thick, very heavy. Oh, what's this, Jane? This is a mural <laughs> ceiling I did many years ago. Oh, it's beautiful. Uh, yeah, this is at the top of a round staircase. Um, this was a bit of a challenge because we couldn't get scaffolding in. It wouldn't fit. We couldn't oh, get no. a cherry picker in. We couldn't get anything in there to get me up to the ceiling. So we had a contractor come in and he cut holes in the walls to get to all the support beams and he put planks all the way across so he made a suspended platform for me to stand on while I painted this and then the entire wall oh all the walls gosh. had to be patched and fixed after that so how long did it take you to complete it because it looks uh, I mean it looks I think really it was big a couple of weeks because uh -huh. It's flat and I, we wanted it to look like it was receding. Okay. So to make sure that the dimensions were right took a little a little more time. And there's little figures in there. There's Are little they like birds. little oh. <laughs> how cool. And this was just um playing with fabric. Um that I like it's beautiful to get the folds and the fabric and the pattern. I know a quick glance you think it's a photograph. Mm. Nope. <laughs> it's all paint. This is a paint. <clears throat> the lace, painting. everything's paint. I thought lace is beautiful. And here's another ceiling that I did. <clears throat> I think the ceiling was about 18 feet high, maybe something like that, over the dining room. And this was really, really challenging because it all had to be exactly square. And you know, houses are not. This even is all painted. Square. This it's is all a, painted. Yeah, it's all not. Painted. Oh, this looks familiar. Mm -hmm. So lastly <laughs> is the design for the mural. You all want to hear about it, we know. <laughs> so here we got my trees and all the little atmospheres. And so this was the sketch um, that we came up with for the end. And that's not even the finished piece, I just realized. Ah! Uh, there's, there's not, that's not the finished piece. Oh, it's not. It's missing some things. Uh oh, that's how you check the Facebook <laughs> and the website. You'll both have, have the finished pieces. You'll have to go and, and look at it and see uh, the finished pieces. But, but there's our, our Clear Vision 2020 Optical Guardianship mural. And uh, this was really a fun piece. I enjoyed it. I mean, even though it was super hot, <laughs> Poor sticky Jake. every day, um, but I really enjoy. I I was really excited to do this this piece. And We're really excited to have you do it. it. Do you want to just talk about a couple of the lenses and give everybody the little rundown of what the mural is about for for you, like what you wrote about it? So, Clear Vision Twenty Twenty mm -hmm. was presented on um, by Pack um, about. I don't know what what was your what was your yeah. prompt was, with it? it yeah, was, so having vision for the future, mm -hmm. right? And what we need to focus on, what are the important things we should sort of look towards, mm -hmm. which is why Jane's mural sort of fit the best um, when we were looking at all the submissions that came in. It kind of encompassed all of the little elements that we really should be looking at. Yeah, so um, I have these uh, old binoculars on my desk and I thought this would be a great opportunity to to look through those binoculars and see what sh what should we be looking at and what's what's going on and so um, we have on here on the right hand side is um, you're sort of underwater you can see the sun above the water so you're under the water and then you're flowing through the air and you end up on top of the water and the bottom it's topsy turvy mm -hmm. because that's kind of where we're at right now. Like we don't know what's well, going on. Well, we're, perfect. We're, we're underwater and we're above water at the same time, and that's sort of the concept with with the background there. Mm -hmm. um, and then we've got the sailboats, which represent um, you know life on Long Island. Um, mm -hmm. You can't escape seeing 
the water, the bay, yeah. are all around us. So um, there's that, and then the swan uh, represents catch eye, and of course we have the little heart hands um, mm -hmm. representing togetherness, and um, not only with um, all the racial tensions that have come up, but just but just everyone getting along. Just taking there's, care there's of each so other. So many things that that pull us apart and you know we're, we're all experiencing the same things we always mm -hmm. all experience heartache and loss and joy and happiness you know we all feel the same way and we really need to you know remember that get it together <laughs> <laughs> on the bottom of that there's a little seed that has um, a vine coming out and that's just kind of spreading the message of love and togetherness right? get little, in there. Little, Oops. That's okay. there it is <laughs> and then we have a bright Beth pink chrysanthemum <laughs> with the bees kind of just remembering about you know the, the bees and the endangered species of other mm -hmm. insects and, and animals on our planet and that's just a little nod to that and then we've got the binoculars there so we have a, a single person at the bottom who is going down into the water so it's sort of like we're drowning out isolation and we're rising up in togetherness so in the other lens that's coming up there's a group of people and it's just it's just it's not gender specific mm -hmm. it's just everybody can representing a single person mm -hmm. and being together and remembering that you know we all handle things differently and, and we need to to come together and then of course all the covid <laughs> biohazard the covid little guy there um, i like how these the pop bats. out of this yeah so originally um i had uh technology symbols mm -hmm. in there and then when the pandemic hit we, I, they, were, they were easily yeah. changed out to what yeah. was going on um the next one with the little bird is the is new york state bird and the new york state tree and then down below is all our farmlands mm -hmm. not only here we have wonderful farm stands and farms here on long island but also across the country yeah. and um the mountain up there is um mount shasta but it really represents water sourcing mm -hmm. where where water comes from um and rain and rainforests and then all that encompassing there um and then is the that toilet paper for COVID? no i'm just kidding oh so Silly. then we've got this goldfish. Oh my goldfish! <laughs> dipping down into uh, the pollution, the waters. You know, all of our water gets polluted. There's that massive. Yeah. I don't even know how big that is. Everyone knows what I'm talking about. Yes. But, so it, you know, just to remember, throw your trash in appropriate places. Yes. Like, and pick it up. Pick it up Please. when you can. Also, uh, the next one is um, forest fires, mm -hmm. natural disasters. It re represents all those things. And then that last one over there is the universe. Oh, um, sorry. <laughs> just to remind us that, you know, how small we are in this ever expanding right. universe. And it also stands for the future and, you know, the, the good things to come, hopefully. Yeah. And then the other two that are empty, you'll yes. have to go on the website and see what out. I did with those. <laughs> Create abusive lenses. Yeah. <laughs> well, this is great because from being able, for everybody who doesn't know your work, they've seen you working on the mural and you can see some of the steampunk aesthetic um, in the mural too, but you can really see where you're pulling everything from and how, how much the, the mural really relates to your own work. Mm -hmm. Yes which isn't always the case sometimes the murals have nothing to do with the artist's work but we love how you incorporated all the things that you love to work with and we're able to bring them into the clear vision mural yeah. and then you guys should also check out jane's website she has an awesome little video on there i'm i'm going to try and open it actually because i think it will work if i do it because we are sharing my screen that is her running around. <laughs> like, I love this little video. <laughs> so um, obviously I'm a fan of old horror movies and um, silent film and, and all those fun things. So uh, this this was, I knew I wanted to do something fun. And uh, my friend who designed my website, um, Brooke Venable, she said, oh, let's, let's just, let's do a movie. It's so good. And um, she there was standing there filming me and telling me, okay, now, now look this way and <laughs> I'm scared and then run You gotta away. use this for something, actually. <laughs> you know, yeah, well, we'll talk. 
right? I have an idea, but I don't want to. <laughs> so it's really, it. really funny. And if you watch, it's you so run good. across the bridge. Oh, oh there it is. Watch. Okay. It's coming up. <laughs> I'm going to start running in a minute. And wait a minute. Here I go running. And all of a sudden, my nightgown gets stuck oh. on the ground. <laughs> you left just enough just enough of a second that you see it that's really funny ripped a huge hole in it, it oh my terrible. gosh oh, so. Really so if you want to find jane guys you can go to janedion.com and you can have her emails right here on the bottom janedion13 at gmail.com you can follow her on instagram you have a pinterest i haven't seen your pinterest i have to check it out and facebook of course um, and you can see some more of her work here and read some more about Jane. I just want to thank you for being with us tonight. We have to also want to just, on behalf of the Patrick Arts Council and Mocha LI, thank Jane for doing our Clear Vision 2020 mural. Oh, thank you. It was my pleasure. And I'm sure you guys are going to see more from Jane. Yes, so thanks so much and for being with us. moving parts. <laughs> and moving parts. I can't wait. I want to crank, yeah. crank them. <laughs> Thank you again for being with us. Thank you, Beth. Thanks for being with us tonight, guys. If you missed